for another example, let's consider the infinite series, sum from n going from 2 to infinity, 1 over n natural log of n squared. So I'm going to fit this to 1 over x natural log of x squared. We write our improper integral down. We notice the way that we're going to solve this. Well, I have a natural log of x inside of a square, so it's a u substitution. u is natural log of x, du is dx over x. We put in our terms. I'm going to wind up with du over u squared. That's u to the minus 2. Add one, flip it over. It gives me that as the antiderivative. I put the natural log back in, and then I put it in, setting things up as my improper integral, since we're going to go back to x for everything. So I have limit b goes to infinity minus 1 over natural log of x from 2 to b. So we're going to evaluate b and 2 and then take the difference. Okay, when I put these numbers in, the 2 is going to have a minus minus natural log of 2. So that'll go out in front as 1 over natural log of 2. Then the b term is going to be minus limit b goes to infinity of 1 over natural log of b. We saw earlier, as b goes out to infinity, natural log of b goes out to infinity also. So this term right here is going to go down to 0. So we're left with the improper integral is going to have value 1 over natural log of 2. That's a number. I don't know what the number is off the top of my head. But that's going to say that the improper integral converges, so the series has to converge also. So another example of the integral test. Now, we have a special case of the integral test. We have what's called the p-series test. I'm going to have p as a number. It's fixed between 0 and infinity. We're going to call p-series a series of the form going from 1 to infinity, 1 over n raised to the pth power. So the rule is going to be you take your p-series. We're going to have two cases. When p is between 0 and 1, including 1, my p-series is going to diverge p is greater than 1, it's going to converge. Proof of this, it's going to be the integral test. And then if you want to know how to do that integral, that's going to be calc video 8.8, .8, I think part 3 or 4. Anyhow, all you're going to do is take your sequence here, fit it to 1 over x to the p, and then just compute that in improper integral. Pretty straightforward. Let's look at some examples of this. First example, I look at the series that goes with 1 over square root of n, as n goes from 1 to infinity. Here, p is equal to a half. A half is between 0 and 1, so I automatically get this series diverges. Should you memorize the p-series test? I would say yes, because it's not as bad as you'd think. First off, the break case is at 1. The series that goes with p equal to 1 is just summation 1 over n. That's the harmonic series. It's so special it gets its own name. We know that diverges because if you use the integral test, 1 over x goes to natural log of x. Now, you got a 50-50 shot for deciding which side is for convergence and one, which one is for divergence. The way we remember convergence is by my next example. Okay, we're going to look at the series for 1 over n squared as n goes from 1 to infinity. P is equal to 2 here, so it's going to converge. 2 is bigger than 1. Okay, not only do we have convergence, but with a little bit more math, we can actually find the sum. That sum is going to be the unlikely number pi squared over 6. If you can remember that, then that gives away the whole p-series test. Because then you know the side that has 2, if you break it 1, the side that has 2 is going to be the side that converges. Okay, another cool one. Okay, we're going to have the series for 1 over n to the 4th. n goes from 1 to infinity. That's going to converge since p is equal to 4. And then that also has the unlikely number for a sum of pi to the 4th over 90. Again, we need a little bit more math before we can get to that answer. Okay, note, where am I getting these from? Well, if you're going to take more math classes, you want to keep your eyes out for this business of Fourier series or you go hit it up on Wikipedia.